Okay, I'm going to call this episode five more slow down and smell the roses reasons to create from a place of rest. Now, there's a tendency to think that everything depends on us. I mean, I don't know if you fall into that trap, but I know I certainly do. Do you know what I mean? As a, as, a, as a capable human being, it's very easy for us to lean on our own strength and understanding and fail to realize that there is actually a far greater source that we can draw from. You know, that the, the production and fruitfulness of our lives somehow leans entirely on our efforts. You know, I, I do believe that there's a better way, a more peaceful way to live and contribute to others. Uh, uh, the way of Jesus is not burdensome. His creative nature is not something that we have to grasp for, earn, or deserve. It is something that is granted to us by virtue of being created in his image. You know, the, the idea, the, just the sheer absurdity of the idea and concept that human beings could have come about as a result of like millions of years of odd genetic weirdness and it's just like really beyond a joke. You know, we are made in the image of the creator he is the creator of all things. He made the universe. He made the planets. He made the stars. He made the sun. He made the moon. He made the hills. He made the grass. He made the sea. He made the insects. He made the birds. He made the animals. You name it, if it's a made thing, there is a maker behind it, a designer behind it. The creator did it. Full stop. End of conversation. There is no other answer. There is no other explanation that is even vaguely reasonable for the wonder that we enjoy and that we inhabit right now. But so, so here are five more thoughts, you know, um, from, the creation, from the creation narrative about creativity and working from a place of rest. Number one, seed time and harvest. The Genesis 1 verse 12 says the seed was in itself. God places seeds inside everything that is living that's capable of production. The created world was not searching for something outside of itself to fulfill its nature and destiny. When in the creation narrative we find God saying, you know, I made the trees and the fruits and the herbs and the grasses and their seed was in themselves. Well, I believe that the seed of greatness is in you. You know, you are not looking for something outside of yourself to fulfill your nature and destiny. The world wants you chasing after things. The world wants you running from one thing to another, thinking that to if you obtain this, if you purchase something else, if you look this way, think this way, do this way, then somehow you will become the person that you are designed to be. But the reality is you're actually already in the process of becoming who you already are on the inside. It's more an unveiling that's taking place. Um, you know, the, you are God's workmanship. We are told in Ephesians, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he has already prepared for you to walk in. The seed of your greatness and contribution to the world, your fruit, if you like, is already in you. Now, the beauty of the creative life is in the discovery of who you already are and the beauty that God has already planted within you. You know, it may be a small seed in the first instance, but tended and nourished it will grow out and then reach and stretch out branches that touch many, many lives. I, I wholeheartedly believe that there is a unique, um, a unique contribution that each one of us has to bring, a creative, a creative aspect that needs to be brought to the table that we alone can bring to the party. You know, in a push-button world, the idea of patiently tending a seed until it's grown and flourishing is kind of unpopular. But the way of faith 
is really not about the speed with which we can genetically modify our own growth. It just is not going to happen. You know, the, the, the pictures in scripture are, are agricultural, not mechanical or digital. I love this verse from Luke 8 verse 15. It says, but that, speaking of seed on the good ground, speaking of the heart, that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And here, here's the, here it is, here it comes, get ready. And bring forth fruit with patience. Number two, Genesis 1 verse 29. And God said, behold, I have given. Behold, I have given. He gave all of the trees and the fruits and the herbs, etc., um, to, to the animals and to man to eat. Behold, I have given. And, and what, what really strikes me here is God gives first. He is the first instance in every endeavor. He is the prime mover, the prime directive and the prime director. You know, the beauty that is that this releases us from this incessant need to be original. You know, nothing we make has not already been thought of. Jesus has been there first and we simply follow. You know, what, what do I mean by this? Well, the creative life is one where we tap the genius of heaven. That's, I, I honestly believe it. He is for you, he is with you, and he wants to create through you. There's a joy in discovery. You know, what you bring to the world uh, it will be as much a delight and a surprise to you as it is to others. This is the wonder of creative life. Uh, I like to think of creative life as the gradual unveiling of God's glory, his outshining in a person's life. God has given abundantly. And because of that, we can now generously give as well of ourselves and of the gifts that he has entrusted to us. Number three, rest upon completion. The heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. He rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. You know, there's, there's great delight and satisfaction in completion. I believe that you are a finisher just like your father. And when you finish, I urge you to stop and to appreciate what you've made. You know, there's a crowning of your work with thanksgiving and gratitude that will add a whole new dimension to the creative process when you apply it consistently. The creative cycle, I see the picture, I, I, it's from a good number of years ago now, but the, the, that picture of the water cycle where the water comes down and then goes back up and there's this cycle that God put in place in creation in the natural world. And I think the creative cycle is one similar to that. It's one of flow from and to God in constant communion. And celebration and appreciation, I think, complete the cycle and allow the clouds to form again, ready for a new reign of ideas and blessings to fall into your heart and mind so you can continue the creative process. You know, it's, it's very easy in today's world to run from one thing to the next. But instead of kind of that hasty sprint, take the time to slow down uh, when you complete. Yeah, pause to appreciate and recognize the source of your power and production. Don't be in such a hurry to run to the next thing on the list. Take a, take a moment to look and see how far you've come and to enjoy what you've made. Number four, four of these five, rest is blessed. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Genesis 2 verse 3. You know, two things are specifically blessed in these early chapters of Genesis. People and a day. God blessed a day and it was a day of rest. Sometimes we think that the blessed day yeah, is the one where we've done so much and completed so much and produced so much and done uh, like gone so many places or whatever else it may be. But like God is just so just not us. He looks and he says, well, I've got these six days 
All of those other days were good, 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 very good, very good. Um, but this seventh day, oh man, I'm going to bless this one. And it was a day of rest. Rest is blessed. And the people whom he blessed, say blessed a day. And then the people whom he blessed only just moments prior stepped directly into that blessing. You know, there's a pace of grace that we're invited to enjoy. And I believe that this should be the starting point of our every endeavor. If we hear God and we move according to his direction, there'll be a rest and a peace that we enjoy even in the midst of like a lot of activity. And, and it's interesting to note that mankind's first experience of life with God was restful rejoicing in his rich provision. You know, there remains a rest, we are told in Hebrews 4 verse 9, there remains a rest for the people of God. If only we will choose to believe him and step into it. And then from that blessed place of rest, we then work. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus first, everything else follows. Hallelujah. Number five, formation. The Lord God formed man. Genesis 2 verse 7 formation by the hand of God. I believe that God still forms men and women inwardly. You know, you're not just a cookie cutter copy of the next person in line. You are uniquely formed for purpose by a personal hand. God is carefully shaping your life and preparing you for eternity and eternal stewardship. You know, the formation of our hearts begins when we stop fighting against God and recognize that he knows best yeah, what will make us into the people we need to be to walk fully in his grace. And even and, and we've all faced these and I'm not in any way saying that this is easy, but even the hard circumstances and testing can act as tools to cut away the pride and self-reliance so we throw ourselves more fully on the provider. And I mean, to a, to a very small degree, I have experienced that over these past months. And oh my Jesus, thank you so much because it's brought me into a place of fresh dedication, but just a fresh um, dependence on him. And, and I, I, I tell you something, man, it is a great deal more enjoyable being dependent on God than dependent on my own genius and whatever like I can bring and do and be. Ah, there's not words, only shikirakandala bakundale mehinde kumbola hondaha. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's a rest when we cease from our own works and trust God for the outcomes in our lives. Hebrews 4 verse 10. He who is entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works. I mean, like, wow, that one, you could camp out there for a long time and dig a very deep well drinking from that one verse. This is not uh, talking about passivity, by the way. I really don't believe that. It's an active striving to enter into the mystery of faith. God and man working together in close communion, one in which God thank thankfully does the heavy lifting. Hebrews 4 verse 11 says, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest to strive to enter. But seriously, once you're inside, don't be in a hurry to return to the frantic pace of this self-obsessed world. There is a greater, richer, fuller contribution that you'll bring when you relinquish control 
and allow God to fill and flow through your willing frame. He wants to speak in you and through you. Uh, he wants to do through in you and through you. You know, it's not easy to discover this. And I think that that's why we're told labor, therefore, to enter that rest. It's going to take some work to disentangle ourselves from the common wisdom and the uh, like the multitasking madness that we find all around us. It's not easy to discover this rest in a culture so bent on speed and consumption, but it is possible. Just listen to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful verse. Hebrews 4 verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. It's ready and waiting. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully uh, it's been an encouragement to you today. If you want to connect any further, you can do so through my website at davidleemartin.com. Have a great day.